So we've been working on uh, this entry road um, and the tall pines when you come in. Um, it's been a uh, uh, it's been an interesting process. We continue to work with the NRCS Soil Conservation Service and the DNR as we um, make decisions on our on our property and our long-term management. Um, for the last 20 some years, we've been working with a management uh, program to, to make sure that a couple things are taken care of. One, the safety of our site with fire danger is, uh, is an important piece, especially with kids and staff and families using our site and also to be a good neighbor to make sure that the forest is healthy uh, for the surrounding areas. Um, and then also, uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, these tall pines um, grew nice, big, and tall, uh, and continued to, to um, get thick and uh, welcome every traveler that came into Camp Vermilion. We have been, uh, um, over the last winter, we've been working specifically on this place, on this part of the site. Um, there is, uh, if you can see in the back there, I'm gonna kinda hold it right here, and I want you to kinda see in the back, uh, back in that area, all of the balsam that are thick back in there and an occasional scattered birch. But those balsam, you can see, especially right in there behind this tall pine, right in that area, they're incredibly thick. And those ladder fuels uh, or, or dry, older balsam um, are, are um, just an incredible source for fire danger if anything were to ever come through here. It also kind of chokes out those tall pines. And so, what we are working with is to one check the check the um, stability and the and the health of those balsam, and so there are certain areas around camp that uh, that it's okay. I think you can kind of see uh, up over here. Um, there's some aspen and balsam kind of mixed in, but they're not as thick. Uh, a little bit healthier, a little bit healthier stand, but this stand over here uh, incredibly thick, and uh, and potentially dangerous. Uh, we also keep an eye on the health of the balsam with budworm rot, and that's a worm that gets into the stump, into the center of the tree, and kind of eats it from the inside out, which basically gives you a hollow tree, which is not what you want. So we have been working to remove the, the balsam that are either bad ladder fuels uh, or that are not healthy. And so this stand in particular obviously had a lot of those uh, as well. Um, the process was they, they came in, they took out the lower balsam, uh, and, and then in the process of that, we also wanted to thin these, these uh, pines up in this area and these tall pines. And so like I uh, said, maybe if you caught the other video up by the, the treetop cabins, we needed to take one out of every three or four uh, pines so that they would get healthier, thicker, and taller um, and give us the next 50 years of great uh, northern pines. So, as we do this, there's a, there's a period of time that, uh, um, that you have to deal with the mess. Um, and so that's what we're dealing with right now. We are in the process of uh, most of this in this area is going to be, is going to be left uh, for good forest litter floor, um, natural forest litter. Um, and then, uh, and then we, we are going to uh, continue to maintain and keep an eye on these north uh, these uh, white pines and red pines um, and make sure that we are uh, that we continue this stand as a healthy stand and that we keep those ladder fuels in a healthier low, uh, a healthier situation rather than in that real thick bad situation um, some of what we've been doing the staff uh, when when everyone else couldn't be here um, our our staff planted 200 white pine trees in this area so 50 years from now, uh, when we're all bringing our grandkids uh, up to camp, um, I, hope, uh, I, I hope I'm still alive when I'm 99, almost 100 years old, um, and enjoying this place. Uh, but I'm almost for certain that these pine trees uh, will be welcoming people if I can't. So as we do this, <clears throat> we continue to, uh, continue to work with the experts, continue to work with our neighbors, and continue to work with our volunteers to make sure that this place is ready and welcoming. Um, it's, uh, I, I, I share this with you, one, because it's good to know what's going on up at the camps, but I also share this with you because uh, I want you to share what's going on uh, at the camps. If you have questions, feel free to call. Um, this is 
Uh, this is actually less of an impact than it was in 2008 when we had to clear 60 acres of balsam uh, because of the budworm rot. At that time, we planted 9,000 red and white pine, and, uh, and that was um, 2008 and 9, and uh, we've got about a 90% survival rate on those trees. Um, and as you come to camp, you, you will see those um, and uh, enjoy, enjoy their growth. They're about 8 to 10 feet tall right now, and the deer can't get to them anymore. So we don't need to bud cap them anymore. So we are uh, excited about this. We also know that place is important. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about your place and how we're taking care of it. And we will uh, continue to take care of it, make sure that it is ready for you when you return. I'm feeling a little sprinkle. So uh, I'm going to sign off for now. Uh, I hope you are well. Uh, and again, if you have questions, go to the website, uh, which is probably how you got this video. And, uh, and let us know if you have questions. Talk to you soon.